Welcome back. It's almost spring. It feels like spring. You're getting some warm weather here and that's what I thought of right away. Bunnies, chicks, and flowers. <laughs> so this is a really cute little um, combo of little baby bunnies and a chick spring flowers and a teacup and I'm going to be painting it with uh, artist grade acrylics this time and I found some scrap paper and thought that this uh, wood grain one would do good as a tabletop so look through your scrapbook papers you'll probably find some really cool uh, papers that you can use for this too. I like something fairly calm for the background because I like my focus to be on whatever I'm painting. But yeah, everybody's different. So you can choose whatever you think would go good with this or you could paint your own background. It's up to you. Now with this one, I did uh, supply a traceable and you can find that in the members page on YouTube or in my Patreon. Uh, it's for all levels so you can check that out, download it and uh, paint along. Now I would suggest watching through the video first and then um, going through it again and painting along and that way you'll know when you can stop and then continue watching. Um, right now I'm going to be starting with like I always say the background and work your way forward. So the leaves and the flowers are going to be the first thing. Um, because I'm using artist grade acrylics though they are fairly transparent. A lot more than uh, the craft uh, paints that I usually use uh, in my books. But you can use white in the areas that you're painting first if you find that your background um, is coming through, showing through too much. And uh, that's what I end up doing is putting on a base coat of white or buff is another one you could use or add some white to whatever color it is that you're using. So I'm going to start with the uh, big leaf in the center there. And I'm going to do a little bit of mixing, uh, blending on the paper while it's still wet. I like to do this with uh, fur and feathers and with leaves also. And that way you don't get uh, real hard edges. You can kind of blend them in together. So right now I am uh, using a 3 8 uh, I believe it is, and it's an angled brush. It's a Velvet Touch by Princeton. They're a nice, uh, you can get long handled or sh short angle, short handled, and uh, I like using the angle because of the ability to get into tight little areas. So as you can see here, uh, the little diamonds are showing through this paint quite a bit. So I didn't want that showing through. So I do end up uh, putting on some white, more white into that paint just to cover that up. Um, and what I like to do first is put a base coat on. So you're looking at your underneath color. So like what is the base of this leaf? Is it more light with dark streaks or is it dark with light streaks? <laughs> you kind of have to look at your reference photo or whatever you're using. Um, and try to figure out what's the biggest amount of color that you'll have to paint. 
um, and with the leaves it can vary. Uh, this one was light and then dark streaks. Now if you find that you're putting too many dark streaks in and you don't have much of your lighter colors showing through then you can just put the the lighter color back over top of the the dark color. That's the nice thing about acrylics is you can always fix it. Now the stems of the uh, snowdrops and I think those other bell shaped ones are a different type of, of um, spring flower. Skillia I think they call it. I could be wrong. I could have said that wrong too. But there is a white one like that and they kind of remind me of uh, Lily of the Valley. But it wouldn't be Lily of the Valley because they don't come out till later. But this is just a made up thing. Um, made up a little um, vignette so it could be anything you want, right? <laughs> could have sunflowers in there it doesn't matter if it if you like it put it in that's the way I look at it that's a great uh, starter for practicing if you're very new to this painting um, I don't do a lot of canvases for YouTube just because I do quite a few uh, videos every month I think I, I think it's up to 10 videos a month. So yeah, that's a lot of canvas. <laughs> and I don't have that many wall space to put them up either. And I don't want to have them just laying there. So I like to uh, use up my scrapbook paper. And I also have a lot of uh, journals like uh oh what's that uh diane reevey reevely journals uh, i like a fairly heavy paper um and then i've made my own uh, you'll see a lot of my uh paintings were done on file folders which is an excellent uh, paper to paint on because it doesn't warp so if you got your old file folders don't throw them out can just gesso over them and use them up again. So as you can see here, just streaking and you just pay attention to the direction of the pattern on whatever it is you're painting. So with this it's the lines in the leaves. With fur, the fur lays in a certain way. Same with feathers. And you just have to take a look at your reference photo and pay attention to the details. So here's the uh, stems I'm doing and again see-through so I'm going to end up doing most of this all in white. It'll look a little bit strange but I will paint over the uh, flowers and the stems again once they're dry. Now when I paint, I kind of, uh, I go all over the page, I guess. Uh, I don't stick to one area and finish it completely. I usually, uh, it's almost by color I like to paint. So I'm using green, so I'll find everything that I need to do in green. Um, now that's as far as the layers I do is background, mid ground and then foreground but I look at all the colors that I need to do in the each level so all the leaves are in the background so that's why I'm doing them all at the same time. What do you like to do? Do you tend to stick to one color or do you go all over the place? Do you stick to one little spot and finish it completely? Everybody's so different. Um, it's really fascinating to watch other painters on YouTube and uh, see the different ways that they paint and uh, 
it just amazes me and inspires me at the same time. So if I haven't done it one way, I always love to try it and see what I think. Cause you never know. You always learn from your other uh, other art friends and there may be something that they're doing that you've never tried or never considered and could really help you in certain times that you're painting. And you keep that in your little uh, creative library <laughs> in your head. So there we go. It's kind of a light green white. So I'm going to let that dry. And then uh, we'll start off with the bunny first. And we'll have to do the same thing, of course, with the bunny. So we'll have to put a, a base coat. And we'll be using a buff color because he's kind of got a mid-tone underneath the top layer of fur. You kind of see that buff laying underneath. For me, I like to do a lot of detail as far as the fur. Um, and this bunny's kind of up close, so I kind of like to show the fur when it's uh, close up painting. If it's far away, I don't necessarily put in every um, hair type of thing, but I do like doing it. And this one kind of uh, justified me to do that. Same with the little chick. So again, just painting them in. So what do you guys like to paint for spring? Are you more into the flowers or landscapes? Animals, birds? I do love flowers, as you know. I haven't done a lot of landscapes. I think I will be doing more. But I do want to get back into uh, portraits. Um, I've got a few already started more in the um, elf fairy realm. <laughs> I love that. I, I love whimsical fantasy type stuff. And maybe get back into some pastels. Colored pencil, maybe. Watercolor. We'll see. Haven't done a lot of uh, portraits in acrylic. I've done some, but not as many as uh, pastel and colored pencil. Now, as you see, it, it's pretty uh, transparent. You really have to put a good thick layer on. But this bunny's going to have quite a few layers with all the uh, different colors that's in his fur. And uh, to get the fur looking proper, you do need quite a few layers of different colors. So if it shows through a little bit on this base la layer, I'm not too worried because I know I'm going to have... Uh, mm, probably three or four layers of, of other colors. Now if you're doing this and doing the base coats and you're losing some of your 
details inside like his eye or nose or something you'll always have your traceable you can refer to and you could try and line it up also and re uh, put it back on your um, base coat layer so you can see where to paint but um, with this one I tried to paint around different things so I left his eye open and the flower and that type of thing so I'm not gonna paint over the chick yet I'm gonna have uh, the chick done in a soft yellow I always find though that this is the easiest way for beginners to uh, start doing painting is by doing the base coats like this it's a little bit easier for them and as you get more confident in your skills then you could try other things try the other uh, techniques of uh, acrylic painting because there's quite a few of them out there but it's first to get your confidence level up that you can do it because I find that's the biggest hold back for people is their um, inner critic telling them that it, they're not good enough and they talk themselves out of uh, trying anymore I know all of us have done that at one time or another but you just need a couple successful paintings under your belt to uh, to be able to shut that door on that critic <laughs> and say yes I can Now this cup, um, I did it kind of old cement type <laughs> look. <laughs> um, you could make yours w however you want. You could have special paper put on. You could um, make it shiny if you wanted to. I just wanted the older look of it. I have the twine for the little wrap around bow there. I'm still using my uh, 3 8 angled flat here. As you can see, it works pretty good. I would say uh, the flat angle and this is a round I'm using now but are pretty well the most used brushes for me in acrylic. I don't like using too many large uh, rounds. I use mostly uh, mm, I would say a six and down so fairly small for detail and then uh, flats I use a lot for uh, shading certain um, gradation shading
just want to make sure I got a really good coat on this one especially because the cup um, it's going to be mostly white so I didn't want any of that background showing through. Now this is one brush that I uh, love to have when I'm doing fur or feathers or hair, grass, that type of thing. And it's called a grainer or a rake brush and you can get it in different widths. Uh, you can even get it as a flat or a filbert. And a filbert is rounded on the top um, but they are fantastic for doing your little marks because then you don't have to take a fine liner and do each individual little mark. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, yeah this works really well. I love them and uh, most manufacturers have them. Uh, like I said, they're either called a grainer or a rake brush. Now this is going to be my first layer and I'm using uh, burnt sienna for the first layer. And you're going to probably say, well, why did you cover it all back up? Um, I cover almost all of it up, but it's because it's transparent, you will see it through the next layer. So it gives it depth. And you just, uh, the more you put on, the better it looks. Now, if you find that you're really hating it, then just put another coat, thick coat of buff the main um, base color back on top and start over again. Don't throw these out. They're so easy to fix. And another thing to remember, every single painting has an ugly stage. So you kind of have to work through that ugly stage. If you're finding that ugly stage isn't going too far, then um, I would just take the buff titanium and start over again. And I've done that many times where I've either decided not to do it the color I was painting with or maybe I didn't like the uh, size of something and I'll, I'll just paint right back over it and uh, start over again. But a lot of times you can fix stuff. And it doesn't mean uh, cover the whole thing, just the area that you didn't like. So still working with that sienna color. They just have a little bit of fuzz fur on the edges of their little ears. And that one ear is uh, facing, you're seeing the inside of the ear, where the other one you're seeing the back of the ear. They do have a little bit of longer fur at the bottom of the ear inside of the ear. So you just have to uh, put a little bit more in there. Now what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of black, Mars black, to that burnt sienna. And that's going to give me a nice dark brown. And then I start putting in my dark areas of the bunny. So between the ears, the back of the head, behind the eye, around the, the neck, and beside the chick, and at the base of the cup. So those are all the shadow areas. 
but you don't want the fur to be thick and only that color. That's why we're ma uh, making um, quite a few layers here because we want to have different uh, colors of that fur sh um, showing through each layer. So we'll go back and forth with the buff, the white, um, this dark brown, and the burnt sienna. So you'll see me switch back and forth um, a few times in different parts of the body of the rabbit. But you just have to think and see where Where's the shadows of this bunny? They would be darker. And if the sun's shining on them, where would the uh, highlights be? Now that's a little flower that's in front of him. Kind of looks like <laughs> funny legs in a two arms and a leg <laughs> but it's not it's flower So I hope you're going to give this a try, and if you are uh, painting along, feel free to just stop the video and catch up to wherever I am and then continue. That's what I do when I uh, do classes from somebody, and yes, I do classes from other artists because you always can find something new to learn. This is buff again, just bright, brightening up a few little areas that were too dark. And then you're going to think, oh, it's too light. And then you just go back in with uh, brown and the sienna color again. You just have to, pre you have to really pay attention to the way the fur is laying though um, to make it look reasonably realistic. <laughs> um, so whatever your reference photo you're using, pay attention to how the fur is laying and is it all smooth and like it's been combed or is it kind of messy looking? Sometimes they're clumpy. Depends. Now there's a little bit of a white area that by his cheek too so that I'll be putting in. And see what I mean? I'm back and forth, back and forth. So if you put a couple layers on and you're not happy with it, put some of that buff back on and try it again. So I'm going to put his little um, mouth in and his nostrils and that way I've got a better idea of how this the little muzzle on him is supposed to go. And I don't want to lose where that was. 
So I'm mixing while I'm painting here. So I just added a little bit of that black for his mouth, but then I also added some buff titanium and uh, mixed it in with that black around the mouth a little bit and uh, brought it into the chin. So it's a nice gray. I just keep working at it until I like it. So it's not you're going to paint it exactly the way you you want it the first time. Not normally. You go back and forth. And stop for a while. Go have a coffee and come back and if there's something that's not quite right you'll spot it right away or put it in uh, put it up towards a mirror and look at it that way you'll also be able to see mistakes so don't sit at your table or stand at your um, desk and think you're going to do it finished in a couple hours You'll be disappointed probably. The best thing to do is do up to a certain amount and then step away from it. Take a look at it. See if there's anything you'd like to change and then you can change it. A whole lot better to do it that way than to get it almost done and realize there was something that you should have changed way back. <laughs> and then you have to redo the whole thing. <laughs> um, I know you get excited about getting it done, and but you really need to step back and just take a look at it. It's a lot of times you don't realize it. You get focused and you're not seeing properly and you need to step away be able to get the full picture. That's a real big problem of mine when I'm drawing. I get into the zone and I start drawing and hours go by and then I realize oh I should have stepped away and there was something that I should have changed a long time ago and it's it's basically not ruined but it's changed everything else from then on that shouldn't have <laughs> been changed so you really do have to take some breaks and and be kind to yourself And if you're really feeling frustrated, stop. Don't continue because it's not going to work out. When you're frustrated, at least for me, I can't paint. Then I, I you don't see properly. You tend to um, skip over things and it just doesn't work out and you've just wasted a lot of time whereas you should have just put it away and came back to it the next day or the next week so do any of you feel the same way? Have you run into that where you just got in the zone and took over and 
you were too focused on one area and it just uh, didn't work out and you should have stepped away This is why I'll do um, paintings on paper too, because it's not a precious, expensive thing to do. It's just paper. There's lots of paper <laughs> and you can do it over again, right? But when you when you done a canvas and it didn't work out, I think it's even harder on you and you feel like you've just ruined a canvas of whatever hundred dollar canvas or whatever it is that's why I always practice on paper if you really really want to get going on canvases start small canvases the board canvases are fantastic and they're fairly inexpensive um, and they don't you don't even have to do big ones I probably wouldn't go any bigger than a 9 by 12 if you're just starting out that's a good size and then you can always if they don't work out you could always sand them down and gesso them and paint over them there he's turning out now cute so we I put the uh, it was uh, yellow I think it was just yellow medium that I used for the chick um, this is a, a pink that I decided to put inside his ears a lot of times their ears are a little bit on the pinky side and then I just darken it slightly um, down near the head all I did was uh, put a little bit of uh, blue in with that pink just to Put a little bit darker color in there. Okay, now let's get doing the bird, little chick. So he's kind of a medium yellow. So I'm gonna add a lot of white to the uh, yellow now. I want him to be fluffy. So he does have uh, a lot of light areas, but the uh, shadowed areas are more on the um, golden orangey side I guess you could say but there's not a lot if you take a look at a chick their little wings are really stubby <laughs> and uh, they usually have some white on the tops of the wing because they're just starting to get their uh, adult feathers and a little fuzz is starting to go away so there's just a bit of shadowing here and there around the eye and beside and under the wing so he was a, a fairly easy one to do I didn't get too crazy with the feathers just a bit of uh, edges there that are kind of fuzzed out <laughs> and I want to keep the chest a little bit lighter Oh, 
hope you can't hear my dog snoring. She's beside me on the couch. <laughs> I'm doing this voiceover up in the living room. Uh, just to make them a little fuzzy, I just let it go out past the bird. Just here and there. Giving it a good try. So if you find your uh, brush is almost picking up paint from your from your painting, that means it's just started to set. And when you paint over something that's not quite dry, it will pick up the paint. So it's a good thing just put it put your brush down and give it a good dry. Or go have a coffee come back. I find the best part is putting in the eyes. I love eyes. They just seem to come alive when you finish the eyes. That's that rake brush, so I'm just throwing more little lines out, little fuzz. You get the, the beak done, it's a little bit of uh, sienna. And a little yellow mixed together. A little lighter on the top. Here comes the eye. This is just Mars black. And then I'll put a little highlight in and then she comes alive. They're cute. <laughs> I really love this one. I think it's so cute. You could do it in all kinds of backgrounds. Barn board background or... Just plain background too. Now I'm going to be doing... Um, the little flowers. Uh, these are white flowers and just to give them a little bit of um, dimension you want to put in some shadows and I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue. Very um, watered down though. I don't want a strong blue. So I pretty well do them all the same, just to show a little bit of shadow. If you've been uh, watching the whole thing so far, let me know what you like in uh, videos. 
do you like voiceovers or do you like uh, the real time uh, talking? Or do you like a bit of music and uh, a little of all three? I know some people don't like music and there's quite a few people that don't like voiceovers or speed ups or <laughs> it's very hard to edit uh, to get the majority of people to like. I find voiceovers uh, a little easier myself. Um, so I know what's happening and I can if I forgot to say something while I was painting then I know what to say when I do the voiceover type of thing. Now these could have been done in a blue too. So if you're painting along you might want to consider that. You could do it in a really soft blue and it would actually look really nice. Uh, these ones are snowdrops that I'm going to be doing. They're white though. Um, but those other ones, yeah, I've seen them in blue. Like a real true blue, cobalt blue. These are s little snowdrops. They have that little uh, green mark on the petals inside. They're so cute. I don't have any here but I always see them in uh, videos from Europe. Garden videos. They always look so nice. And they come up really early. I don't know if I put them in or not. Because we have such a huge amount of snow, um, <laughs> I don't think they would. You would see them. I don't think they would uh, come up properly. There's that big snowdrop right there. So see, you can just paint right over it. Fill it in the way it's supposed to be. Gotta love acrylics for that alone. It's how easy you can fix stuff. Now I find out that I need that um, centerpiece in that one. It's not quite wide enough and then I just paint over it. It's, it doesn't look right. I'm not catching it. <laughs> I don't understand why it does. It doesn't look right. Why? And then I realize, oh, <laughs> I forgot a petal. There we go. And they're kind of a olive green, so all you have to do is take that bright, uh, I think that was permanent green, and just add a little bit of black to it. Or red would work also, and it'll give you a nice uh, olive color. Now they uh, have this little 
uh, green part of the flower. They're really interesting flowers. They, um, that green, almost like a bulb, and then the flower petals come off of it. And then this really thin little stem that kind of droops down. They're very um, delicate looking. And now I can paint in my leaves and my stems and I won't have to worry about the pattern come through now because I put the white on uh, when I first uh, started. So if you want a really nice bright yellow or green or red, whatever it is that you're, you want a real clean color, Put white down first and then you won't have to worry about uh, the background showing through. I guess you could use this for um, spring or Easter would be another thing that would be cute for. That'd be a cute card. So you could paint this and then scan your painting and have cards made. That would be cute. So if you guys have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below or um, in the chat since this is a premiere. I'll try and answer whatever I can in chat, but if uh, you're watching the uh, replay, just leave a question in uh, the comments. Yeah, that looks better. It's nice and bright. There's the eye. Love it when the little glint gets put in. It just makes them come alive. Isn't that cute? So now we have to get this cup done. So I want it rustic looking, so I'm just going to use some um, blue with a little bit of black added to it. So it's ultramarine blue with just a touch of Mars black. Um, I kind of go back and forth a little bit with the shadows here. And the reason being is I should have dried it before I tried to add more. 
So there's the one lesson for you. Dry it. <laughs> and because uh, each time I try to do a, a, a more to it, it just takes off that layer, which, you know, I was in a hurry and I shouldn't have been. So there you go. Do as I say, not what I do. <laughs> Just have to get a little bit of that blue under the bow because I know there'd be a little bit of um, cast shadow from that bow. And the shape of the cup, too, you have to consider how that is. And it's going to cause a little bit of shadow here and there. And I want it kind of rustic looking, so uh, it's not going to be even looking. Not like, uh, say, a shiny cup. This is more like a cement. So it's not going to have... Uh, a real shiny um, highlight area. Now I also have this um, bow on it. And it's kind of like a twine color is what I, I was going for. So I just mixed up kind of a mm, tanny color I guess and I'm going to just base coat the whole thing again in that color and then what I'm going to do to bring the pattern out of the twine is add highlights and shadows and it's not that difficult I know when you see a complicated uh, pattern like that you kind of go like deer in the headlights type of look <laughs> but it's really not that uh, difficult so I'll show you that in a second and you'll see it's very easy and a lot simpler than you thought but you do need that base coat on first Now you could redraw those lines on it again if you wanted to. Or just look at your uh, pattern. I'm drawing it this time. <laughs> Making up a gray here. So I'm concentrating on the shadow. So it's a rope. So it kind of has that little mark, kind of like a, a slant, a little bit of a curve to it underneath and it's going in the same direction all along. So you just look at your reference photo and it's underneath. It's not on top. It's always underneath the bow. It doesn't matter which way it's um, tied. It's always underneath. And 
and just try and remember to have it going the same direction. Kind of like a doing a check mark, I guess you could say. Be a better way of describing it. Okay. So there's the first one. Now we're going to be uh, putting on the highlight. And it's the same thing, but the opposite direction. This is a very quick one as far as uh, details. Now there's only one more thing to do to it and that is to add just a little bit extra darkness underneath. I'm not doing that check mark. It's just a line underneath. So more or less a line on the cup. But it will um, emphasize that pattern more when you do this. Now if you want really detailed, you could do uh, a very thin line where that shadow was on the the rope, but it's not necessary. And there it is. All I have to do is put a little bit of a shadow just at the base of the cup so it doesn't look like it's floating. And I put a little bit more on the bottom of the cup, too. Now for some reason it took that blue off, which was odd. I don't know why, because um, that was dry. So I decided to really make it good and dry. Try it again. be quite a bit of shadow cast because of the shape of the cup. And there it is. So I hope you had fun watching this and I hope you'll give it a try and make sure to download the printable. And have a fantastic day, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.